flying is one of mankind's oldest dreams. I'm sure each and every one of you here has looked up to the sky and wondered what it would be like to fly. But somewhere, the world made you believe you can't. I too have had that dream for the longest of time, to fly in the big blue, absolutely free. And why do we want to fly? For me, to fly is to be free, free from everything, to be joyful, to be purely myself. I think we all have it in us to want this freedom, to break all limitations. And flying gives us this sense of expansion, of joy and beauty where anything is possible. I feel we all have it in us to change our sense of the possible. I've had that dream ever since I can remember. Blindness was just something that happened along the way. It took me seven years to find an instructor who would believe that I could learn. But finally, one day, I made a call. And Anita, she gave me all the instructions of the course, all the details. And here I was, ready to sign up, when I said to her, hey, by the way, there's just one thing. I'm blind. So Anita, my wife, and I have been running Temple Pilots Paragliding School for the past 20 years. And we feel truly blessed to be able to share our love of flying with all who dare to dream. So one fine evening, Anita gets this call, at the end of which there's a stunned silence and an unusual expression on her face. She repeats the words as she looks at me. You are blind and you want to learn to fly solo? Questioning me and awaiting a response from me. And I go, wow, yes, yes, with two thumbs up. We must do this. I knew if it was possible for someone to dream it, it must also be possible to fulfill that dream. And there began our journey. The next day, I met both of them at their home. And Anita and I are having this animated conversation while Avi is sitting in his big chair, staring silently at me for the longest of time, not saying a word. And I'm going all nervous inside, thinking to myself, what's going on here? I wonder why I was so quiet that day. Probably because adventure sports is risky business, and aviation is inherently dangerous, and paragliding is a combination of both, and this man was proposing to take it to the next level. My fighter flying experience in the Indian Air Force and sport flying, a total of 27 years in aviation, was being put to test by this one man and his dream. Now, paragliding engages you both physically and mentally. It's intense. It's not a walk in the park. That's why I call it serious fun. A paragliding pilot completely depends on the visual information. You take that away, and you're really pushing the limits here. For me, it would be a very different ball game to push boundaries, challenge old norms, and wonder what it would be to discover the new possible. I had no evidence that blind people couldn't fly. I had grown up on Batman, and Batman can fly. It was just that nobody had dared to imagine the possibility until now. So my heart had said a big yes, a definitive yes. And now it was up to my mind to make this possible. So I first went to my team, and I got mixed reactions. Some of them even asked, I hope he's able to see a little bit at least. I had to say no. He has no light perception whatsoever. They looked at me, shocked and amused. I knew I would have to learn along the way how to teach. So in the beginning, we actually did uh, a lot of Yeah. Uh, so uh, my first challenge was to give Devanshu an idea of the glider he was going to fly. So I took a training model and through the sense of touch and feel, made him visualize uh, how it all works. And in the same way, I explained to him the theory of light. Absolutely. And for me, I had decided that I'm going to enjoy every minute of that process and enjoy the journey. So on the very first day, on the very first hour, 
he puts me in this large enclosed hall and asks me to run. And he says, run as fast as, I, as you can. And as I'm sprinting in this hall, knowing fully well that I can smash into the wall, trusting that he will ask me to stop in time. My brain is screaming, this is crazy. And my heart will say, just trust. In the first few hours, I got the confidence that Devanshu was someone I could trust. He was ready to listen and very eager to learn. So throughout this session, his looks, his gestures, his body language, the tone of his voice, his smile, everything told me how much he wanted to fly. And not to prove anything to anyone, but purely for the love of flying. I, I vividly remember, I vividly remember the day I was introduced to the gear. It was like meeting the love of your life for the very first time. The feeling you get in your stomach. And that moment, I knew I was into this hook, line, and sinker. So the first time we went to the flying site, I took Devanshu to the landing area. I closed my eyes, and together with Devanshu, we walked on the ground, feeling the ground with our feet. I also showed him how to feel the wind on his face and be able to assess the wind speed and direction just by feel. That day, I officially could suck my thumb. <laughs> because this is how you assess the wind conditions. This is how you do it. And I walked on the grounds, I ran on the grounds, I felt every contour, I felt every rock, I felt the soft earth below my feet. I jumped in the water, I listened to the landscape, the soundscapes, and made a picture of the entire landscape in my mind's eye and made everything mine. I was trying to describe the landscape Devanshi was going to fly in, and it actually became an emotional moment for me to begin to see nature's beauty with new eyes. So as I was describing the stunning scenery that surrounded us, I saw his face lit up. And his imagination of the scenery brought a smile to his face that just took my heart away. That day we did some ground control exercises in which I learned how to manage and control the glider. I learned a lesson in humility. The lines from this famous band, U2, came to mind, where they say, if you want to kiss the sky, boy, you better learn how to kneel. We did exercises called hops, in which my feet didn't touch the ground anymore. And that was exactly how I was feeling inside. So the big advantage we had was that paragliding is a feeling sport. And a paragliding pilot needs to practice and develop the feel for the glider. So after the initial training that involved theory sessions, simulator training, ground handling, takeoff and landing practice, I decided to take Devanshu on a tandem flight. So the idea was to give him the feel of the controls and have him experience for the first time the new sensations of flying. But after a while, it became more than just an instructional flight. It was like two friends having fun in the sky. We were like two children laughing and playing and having the time of our life. A great friendship was born that day. And he notches it up by doing all kinds of aerobatics in the sky. We do spirals and we do dolphins and wing overs. And just amazing time in the sky. I experienced G-forces and got my first taste of what it is like to fly. So after the tandem flight, I thought Devanshi was ready to fly. It was day three, and I cleared him for his solo flight. Now everyone thought I was mad. He tells me this after 45 minutes of intense acrobatics in the sky, and I'm barely about to keep myself from throwing up. I needed some time. I needed a day to mentally prepare myself. So the next day, Picture this. I'm sitting at the breakfast table with my family, and I announced to them that today was the day when I was going to fly solo. And here's what my father had to say. Can you pass me the pepper, please? So the big day arrived, and we were all set. It was not only Devanshri and me, but the whole team was involved. And even the student pilots were very excited. Then what happened? I remember, I was packing the gear. I was packing the gear, getting the gear together, and Avi comes to me 
and says, are you ready to go? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, just give me a minute. And he says, no, 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 you don't understand. And he repeats the question. That's when it hit me. He says to me, you can't do this if you have unfinished business, if you have baggage. Imagine if somebody was to ask you this question right now, what would your answer be? So I sat down for a while, thought about it, and I knew I was free. I was ready to go. So my chief flying instructor, Ganpat, is ready to launch the Vanshu from the top of the ridge. And I'm standing on the ground, ready to guide him through the air and for the landing. Everyone is anxious with anticipation. There's big tension in the air. And I'm feeling a heightened sense of being when suddenly the winds die down. And I'm wondering, why would nature not support in this? And I'm wondering, we maybe have to cancel the flight now. Maybe it's nature's way of teasing and testing us. But then suddenly, the winds pick up. And with a grateful heart, I give the final call. Devan Shu is clear for takeoff. And I begin to run. And as I begin to run off into the unknown, my feet are off the ground. Faith had taught me one thing. Either there'll be something solid to stand on, or you'll get wings to fly. I was airborne, I'd taken off, free of all the shackles, experiencing a sense of freedom, being completely one with all the elements. And that day, I experienced a joy like I've never experienced joy before. I may have lost the sense of my sight, but not the sense to imagine possibilities. You can take away what you want, but the ability to imagine possibilities is what makes these dreams come true. Believe in yourselves. I know firsthand that flying can create magic. We face our deepest fears, but still do whatever that is we have to do. It's a simple act, but profound in its meaning. And maybe that is why Devanshu and I never doubted our decision. We gave it all we had to make it happen. It had to happen. Devanshu had to fly. So thoughts do materialize. And thoughts are powerful things. So if you think you can't, you really can't. But if you think you can, and you believe in it, you surely will. Thank you. Thank you.